I'm Tom Sperry from Fuel Cell Systems. I'm going to show you how we install a fuel cell on a sailing boat. So we've taken the fuel cell out of the main box. Along with that, there are two cardboard boxes containing all the items you will need to install the fuel cell. Everything you need is there. To install the fuel cell, you require access to the battery, the fuel cell itself, fuel, and three other items. One is the battery connector. This time we've got the plug already installed on the end of the cables. So that's easily installed in the fuel cell. With the connector up, we simply plug it into there, like that. The second item is the fuel. The fuel is, in this case, in a 10 litre container. It's a spillproof container, so we can take the cap off, turn it on its side, and the methanol won't leak out. To connect it to the fuel cell, the probe opens the valve, you simply screw it on, like that, and that's the job done. So, Having installed the power and the fuel, the next thing is to communicate with the fuel cell. We need to know what's happening, whether it's on or off, whether it's producing power and what the battery voltage is. As standard, we can do it with this Bluetooth adapter. This simply plugs in. So in there, push it home, test it, and we now have communication with the fuel cell. We need to load our app onto the smartphone or we can use the display. This is an optional extra and this fits into the bulkhead and the nav station or wherever you like and provides data for the system. Next, we have the vapour tube. Simply pull the cover off the spigot, push the silicon tube onto the spigot firmly and this lets water vapour out of the fuel cell. And finally we have the off heat hose. This is a metal expandable hose which can go up to a metre in length. In fact in this instance we don't need it as a metre, we're going to use a very short length and this simply pushes onto the off heat duct of the fuel cell. So in summary, we have fuel connected, we have the vapour output line, this is simply water vapour which is harmless, we have the connections to the battery, we have the communications Bluetooth connector and we have the off heat duct and that's it. In this instance, we're going to upgrade a fuel cell which is already on this boat. The fuel cell is 12 years old, it's operating at about 60% of its capacity and it's time for an upgrade. So, let's show you where it is. It can be installed in lots of different places on a boat, but this was convenient for us at the time. I'm going to remove the old fuel cell, which will be very quick. First of all, taking the fuel container out. That's the fuel. The shoe that the fuel container sits in, again, covers with the kit, so no need to worry about buying anything else. I'm now just going to take the fuel cell out. It'll only take a moment. So this is three or four generations old, and now we put the new fuel cell in. We have the advantage here that the fuel cell's been in before, one is that the vapour line has already been installed and in this case ducts out to the back of the boat. The other is that the off heat tube comes through here, through this bulkhead, into a separate locker. So, short length this time, simply put on there, 
and our Bluetooth adapter is going to go in there. Power here, slightly different plug to last time. Plug in. Now I just need to line the hose up with the old hose that's in there. Now we have new fuel cell firmly in place. Okay, so we've now installed the fuel cell. We're going to install the fuel back in the fuel container. The fuel line's very simple. We just take the line, screw it into the top of the M10, and that's the job done. And then my next job is to connect up the cables to the batteries. So you saw me positioning that short length of off heat duct that we put on the fuel cell neatly up against that hole which went in the side of the locker there. The reason for that is to get the heat from the fuel cell away so that the fuel cell doesn't rebreathe that heat. It is only warm air, it's not hot air. And in this instance, we've taken the off heat into the sail locker, which is adjacent here, and it comes out through that hole that you'll see in the side of the locker there. If you would like to have multiple 10 litre containers of fuel connected so that they automatically go on one from the other, that's possible. We have a device which simply plugs into the fuel line here and gives us two lines out. Okay, we've got a few questions that people often ask about installation on boats. Probably the most common one is, where can the fuel cell be installed on a boat? And given that there are two outputs apart from power that you need to think of, it's really pretty straightforward. One is water vapour. Uh, water vapour can be uh, taken over the side, as we've shown you on this video, or alternatively some people are just content to drain it into the bilge. There's not much of it, uh, and it just runs down into the bilge. It will produce maybe an egg cup full every couple of days, so that's vapour. The other item which we've also shown you is heat. So the heat needs to be taken into a compartment that the fuel cell is not in. Some people are quite content to breathe the fuel cell into the main saloon of the boat. That's perfectly acceptable. If the fuel cell is not in that compartment, then that's fine. You can position the fuel cell basically anywhere you want, as long as the heat doesn't get returned straight back into the fuel cell. Sometimes customers ask about methanol safety. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable to providing the methanol container is strapped down into its seat, which you've seen, uh, the methanol is fine. The methanol itself can be tipped upside down. The containers are very robust. They're actually cleared for air flight by IATA. So in the back of this boat, we have usually got one M10 container in its cartridge holder and another one loose in the back of the boat and over about 60,000 miles of cruising and uh, 10 years, it's never given us a problem. Methanol's best kept off your skin, if you can, uh, and certainly not ingested, uh, that's, that's a key thing. Um, but in terms of flammability, it won't explode, but it will burn, so just respect that. Uh, but as a fuel for fuel cells, it's fine. We often, we often describe the amount of CO2 in the output as equivalent to a baby's breath, and that's about what it is. Uh, it's certainly not equivalent to the amount of CO2 coming out of an adult's breath. Sometimes people ask how long the fuel will last. That's a difficult one to answer because it's rare for people to have a good profile of the amount of electricity they're using on their boat in a day. What I can tell you is that you will get approximately one kilowatt hour out of 0.9 of a litre of methanol. The boat we've just installed the fuel cell on is an Arcona 430. It's 43 feet long and weighs about eight and a half tonnes. We 
typically will use an average of about seven amps continuously during the course of a day. Obviously a little more at light, a little less in the day when we've not got the navigation lights on. At, at the 10 amp fuel cell we're using on this boat will easily balance any load we're running at any point in time. So we know that 10 amps is more than sufficient for us on this boat. Most of our customers are spending some of their time in marinas uh, where they're typically plugged into the mains and some of their time motoring where they're coming in and out of marinas or maybe there's no wind or whatever. In reality, again, most of our customers perhaps use two or three 10 litre tubs of methanol per year. Fuel cells have a finite life. Uh, we tend to measure it in uh, probably nowadays around 7,000, 8,000 hours. So a small fuel cell running flat out all the time won't last as long as a larger fuel cell uh, running only a proportion of its time. That's fairly obvious. Uh, but when sizing the fuel cell for a boat, try and understand the exact amount of power you draw during the course of a day. One way of looking at that is how quickly do you flatten your batteries if you don't recharge them. We're honoured that a number of ocean racers have chosen to use fuel cells to power their boats. In some applications it's particularly useful and the Mini Transat fleet in particular almost exclusively use our fuel cells to power their boats. The biggest compliment I've probably had is from a pair of British uh, ocean racers who said the great thing about a fuel cell is you never have to think about charging your battery. The power's always there. The uh, fuel cell will accept an angle of heel of 35 degrees, either laterally or longitudinally. Uh, so for most boats, that's perfectly acceptable, even when tacking up wind for a day at a time. So the fuel cell will give you reliable power. It's maintenance free. It's virtually silent and it will give you reliable, hassle-free power for years to come.